In this video, we're going to talk about what is the difference between the Yoruba path and the Congo path within Kemetic spirituality. That's Fu Fam. Peace and blessing. This is Derek Raku Moore. And um, first of all, got some good news coming up. Uh, thank you for all of you who've gone ahead. You've you know you've emailed us you've you know left messages and everything and uh, you've been patient um, we finally have the the next book is ready okay it, it will be ready probably within about another four weeks it's going through the editing process and all that kind of stuff right now um, so going ahead and putting that out there because yeah I'm really excited about that um, went ahead and we kind of you know we, we got a lot more information in there a lot more information that will kind of that ties in that whole congo path as well um in this new book that's coming out um so i'm really excited about that um if you're interested in reviewing okay if you're interested in reviewing um just talk to the people you know people who are working with us and find out yeah we can go ahead we can offer a, uh, a free PDF form of that okay we can go ahead if you're interested in reviewing um, just go ahead and check out the little you know the comment suggestion or comment section and everything and um, you know contact us and everything and we'll go ahead and we will we'll reach back out Okay, so like I said, if you're interested in reviewing the new book, um, we'll go ahead and we'll send you a free um, PDF form of that. Okay, um, but yeah, basically, like I said, what we're talking about today, what we want to talk about today is basically uh, what's the difference between the Yoruba path and the Congo path within comedic spirituality. All right. Now, I know some people are probably like, what in the world? You know, what are you talking about? You know, the Yoruba path and the Congo path. Um, and and how does that even relate? What does that even deal with? Well, um, before we go anywhere, before we even go in here and you even start off on that, open up your mind. I need you to open your mind a little bit. And I want you to remember, recall the people brought the, the Africans who were brought here to North America were not in the same situation and same predicament as those who were taken to the Caribbean and South America, right? Remember, in the Caribbean and South America, they actually took like whole tribes there, okay? A whole tribal nation there. Displaced these people there and basically was like, there you are. And most of those areas, they were Catholic. So as a result, they were Catholic and the the plantation owners the slave owners they were um you know like i said they were catholic they were spanish portuguese uh portuguese or um you know or french and i'm not gonna say <laughs> i'm not gonna get into that talking about the, the slave their slave owners was different from the slave owners up here not gonna not gonna even go there um but one of the differences, one of the things that allowed them to, um, the Africans, the enslaved Africans in the Caribbean and in South America to maintain their culture was the fact that they could they could still speak their language. It was so many of those people that were basically, you know, of our ancestors who were taken over there to the Caribbean and to, um, like I said, South America, they were able to maintain their culture, they were able to maintain their language. Um, a lot of their, you know, eating cultural ways and all that, they were able to basically retain those. Now, in North America, particularly, you know, what later on became the United States, that wasn't so much the case. Um, remember, the first people that were brought over here, the first people that... First people that was brought over here to the Americas anyway from Africa were from the Congo and Golan region. The first people that stepped foot on the first enslaved Africans that were brought to North America were Congo and Golan people. All right. 
later on after they went through a whole land grab over there in Africa that's when you started getting all these different groups of people you know people from the Cameroon people from you know Sierra Leone from Mali so forth and so on all right but so as a result unlike like I said unlike in the, the Caribbean and South America where you have like um, an actual an entire tribal nation that was displaced in North America it was basically pockets of people okay um, we do know based upon historical research based upon the logs and everything uh, the ships logs that there were certain people who were you know that was from what is considered to be presently Nigeria. We do know that there was people who were brought here from Sierra Leone, from Mali. We do know that there was people who were brought here from the Congo and Golan region. All right. But because, like I said, because of the way the people were brought over and because of here in North America, North America was a, a Catholic country. It was more of a, it was a Protestant, dominant Protestant um, territory because of it being that way that enslaved Africans that were taken or brought here to North America were not able to practice their culture or practice their religion um, and their language and so forth as those um, enslaved our enslaved ancestors in you know like I said the Caribbean and South America weren't able to do it so as a result you end up having like I said there's these pockets okay now I'm bringing this up about the whole history of this because when you go ahead and you do any kind of research in regards to, you know, the spirituality, African spirituality, Afro diasporic spirituality, in, um, you know, in, like I said, the Caribbean and South America, they'll always go ahead and they'll mention that, for instance, if there is a African religion there, They'll say, okay, well, um, it's, it has this major influence. It's from this major nation or whatever, or it's from this nation. And it continues to exist alongside another practicing religion, okay? And I'm going to use for an example, you'll hear people talk about um, leukemia, okay, in Cuba, or what is also known as Santeria, okay? The leukemia religion is a Yoruba faith. The Congo faith is what they call Palo, Palo Mayambe, um, Palo Riimba, um, Palo Monte, okay? Those are all the Congo faith. And you'll hear people talk about this all the time, how there's a difference. But what people fail to understand is that that same difference that exists over there in um, in the Caribbean and in South America also exists over here in North America. It just isn't as organized, okay? Because it was the same, basically it was the same people who was basically enslaved and brought to the North America, just not as many. Okay, it was a different, um, it was a different group, um, and it wasn't as a vast number of, you know, like I said, it wasn't like an entire tribe. However, it was still the same people who were still brought over here to North America as well. Okay, so same difference, you know, same thing over in Brazil, for instance. In Brazil, they end up having uh, the, you know, the Yoruba faith in Brazil is um, Condomble, okay? Um, but the Congo faith down there is um, Macumba or Kibanda, okay? So, again, it's those same people who basically went ahead and then you still had a mixture of different groups who was taken there, but the major groups, the major um, you know, major nations that was taken over to these areas, they basically, they were able to go ahead and continue to, to exist. Well, so I bring all that up basically because the same thing happened over here in North America. 
But as I stated before, North America, because of the, the enslaved Africans being brought over here to North America, and it is a Protestant country, a Protestant territory, it's not as organized, okay? So as a result of it not being organized, you end up having these people who was, you know, who had uh, from all these different, you know, areas, they basically end up having, quote unquote, the hoodoo religion, all right? But the hoodoo religion or the hoodoo tradition is predominantly a, or is majorly a Congo tradition, okay? It is really a Congo influenced tradition that has admixtures from other tribal nations that have been included within it or incorporated in it, okay? Now, Again, I'm bringing all this up, kind of give you a little bit of background, because now when the whole thing regarding comedic spirituality comes into the picture, um, comedic spirituality goes ahead and it opens up avenues for those African ancestors to go ahead and express themselves. Okay. Now. I've been to different people's homes, seen different, um, you know, different shrines, different altars, and um, this is how I know, and this is why I'm saying a Yoruba, or a, a Yoruba path versus a Congo path, because I've seen the influence that I've seen the Yoruba influence in some of the comedic, you know, some of the comedic altars. Okay, and some of the way that, um, in way in which they approach the you know the the natureu, okay, um, and it basically I find it beautiful by them doing that because mainly it goes ahead and it reaffirms validates what I have been saying all along that Kemet is really ancient Kemet was really a cosmopolitan society, a, 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 an ancient African cosmopolitan society um, that consisted of Africans from all over that con all over the continent who have basically, I don't want to say all over the continent, but they were basically, um, it consisted of a, 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 a it was a multi-ethnic, you know, uh, society. And it consisted of numerous African um, ethnicities or tribal nations, okay, or clans. And this whole idea that it's just, you know, the Kemet, the Kemetic people, it was just, just one group of people and they all had to look this way and all that, it's already been dispelled. They've already, they've already talked about this because they've traced all these different groups. They've tra or, uh, traced number, a number of groups a uh, number of different ethnicities back to Kemet. And it's like, okay, yeah, these they, they still have these same cultural practices. So again, it's let me know. It's, it's basically has verified and validated that these people, you know, I don't want to say these people, but you know, the people of Kemet, like I said, consisted of a multi-ethnic society. All right. Now, if you think of it as being a multi-ethnic society, you think of Kemet as consisting of, like I said, there's numerous African clans, okay? Numerous African tribal nations that exist within Kemet. Then, when they talk about the Netur, so the Neturu, from a cultural perspective, everybody is not going to express it that same way. Everybody is not going to deal with them the same way, okay? They might have, there's some strong similarities, but everyone's not going to go ahead and look at it and, and you know, deal with those, you know, those, those entities, those spirits um, the same way. And this basically is what has transferred over to comedic spirituality, all right? Um, so like I was saying, there's a lot of people who basically go ahead and they follow what I would prefer or what I would pretty much call a Yoruba path. This is their ancestral path. From looking at this from a spiritualist perspective, um, they have a they have a strong Yoruba influence. Okay, um, and that's the reason why they follow. You know, they follow that path. Um, 
there are some people who follow, such as myself, who follow more of a Congo path, our ancestry. Um, and, and, and understand this, okay? This is not to say, because I've heard, I've had people go ahead and kind of email me about this, but this is not to say that um, you are not going to have different ancestors or all your ancestors come from this particular region, okay? That's not what this is saying. Uh, for instance, I know for, uh, I don't have just uh, Congo ancestors, okay? I, I don't have that, all right? Um, but the more dominant ancestors, okay, the more influential ancestors, um, who is basically who's been guiding me and providing and all this has been is from the Congo is basically a Congo and Golan influence okay it's basically from the Congo and Golan region all right so that's the one who's basically when it comes to dealing with my auto work and everything this is the, the ancestor that's been guiding all right so that being said what's the difference between those people or you know who follow the the yoruba path of comedic spirituality versus those who follow the like i said the congo path of comedic spirituality okay and the main difference is that i have found is that uh it's a difference in spiritual technology um what do i mean by that well in for those individuals who follow the kind of like the Yoruba path, and I'm, and again, this is this is just based upon my observation. Um, but those individuals who follow the Yoruba path, most of the time when you're dealing with the Orishas, the Yoruba, the the Orishas are basically the the um, angelic beings within the Yoruba tradition, and those individuals who follow the kind of like I said the Yoruba path of comedic spirituality they look at the Neturu as being similar or very close to the Orisha and um, as far as what I can see there's a lot of they there, there's a lot of uh, how do you put it uh, they serve the Neturu okay um, meaning that they look at them as they are gods, okay? They are gods, they are goddesses, um, or, you know, spiritual beings, angels, whatever the case may be. And like I said, from the individuals in which I've seen and the individuals in which I've, I know who looked at it from this, this is how they approached it. They approached it from that perspective they worked with the Neturu from that perspective. So the Neturu are basically, um, like in um, a lot of your Yoruba traditions, they deal with a crowning type of thing. Um, the individuals I've seen who dealt with, you know, the from a Yoruba path, who deal with chemetic spirituality from that per perspective, they don't necessarily do a crowning, but they do have like a spirit head, a, 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 you know, someone who owns their head, a guardian who owns their head, or a nature who owns their head, and so forth and so on. So it's very similar to how um, they practice a Yoruba tradition. And, you know, like they practice Lukumi, like they practice, um, like I said, Kondomble, um, very, you know, even Vudan. It's very, very similar to that because that is the spiritual technology that they, that the Yoruba, the Fawn, um, that they basically dealt with, okay? Those who follow the Congo path, um, Congo spirituality, Congo spiritual technology is, is slightly different from there, okay? In Congo spirituality, there wasn't and I know I always get a lot of pushback when I when I say this, um, but Congo spirituality it was not uniform, and it was not it was not well yeah it wasn't uniform, like the Yoruba or the Fon tradition, right? Um, there was there were similar beliefs. Most of the people had 
uh, similar beliefs about you know the creator um, in Zombie and Bugo. They 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 all had similar beliefs about you know the supreme being. They all had similar beliefs about the ancestors, and there were similar beliefs about different types of spirits that exist. But for the most part, there wasn't a like a god of this or a god of that. In other words, they didn't have a pantheon. Okay, it wasn't a diverse pantheon of different divinities. They have for the most part like i said it was really for the most part three main types of spirits you had your ancestral spirits you had water spirits and you had these woodland spirits okay and all these different types of spirits basically they can go ahead and they can be worked um in various ways the pantheon came about when you talk about congo spirituality the pantheon came about and how they could be worked and all the different charms that could be made all the different um you know like i said yeah all the different charms all the different inkisis all the different medicines that could be made you know there was a particular medicine for smallpox there was a particular medicine for fertility there was a particular medicine for this it wasn't necessarily a spirit you or a um, like i said in a spirit like an orisha or like a loa that dealt with this it was just basically there was a charm that dealt with this there was a particular medicine that dealt with this so as a result when a lot of the congo and golden people were transported over here to north america transported to the americas but definitely transported to north america they brought over that whole working charms and that idea and the belief in various spirits, various different spirits, okay? So the main difference is a lot of people who basically that I've come in contact with who are um, influenced, have a strong Congo influence, they have a strong spiritualist perspective, okay? They have a very strong spiritist perspective. And they might work it, work the natural, you know, from my perspective, you know, from a, you know, a similar perspective as I do, or it might be, it might be similar, or it might be different. I'm not sure. Okay. <laughs> but for most part, what I've seen is that, um, you know, and I've mentioned this before in the previous video, that the Neturu from a Congo path perspective the nature are not looked upon as being a actual nature, you know, or an actual divinity or, um, you yeah, know, yeah, or, or an actual divinity of, of a particular thing. Okay. But rather as a class of spirits, rather as a group of spirits. Okay. Um, I've given this example, like I said before, you know, my Mpu, okay, who is um, in the, the Greek column Anubis, my Mpu, there is not just one Mpu, there's a host of Mpus, okay, there's, a, 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 there's quite a few Mpus I've come across, you know, um, so that's the Congo path, all right, and because of that, it gives a different way of going ahead and working with those spirits. Working with those spirits is kind of like a, it's, it's a bargaining process, okay? It's not a, it's not a worship. It's nothing to that effect. It's basically a bargaining. Um, and I, when I'm saying bargaining, I, I'm, I'm saying it's more like, it's a, a partnership, there it is, um, in which you're working with the spirit okay the spirit is going ahead and providing you something and you're providing the spirit something so it's basically kind of like a business partnership between the two of you or between the two of us um that can easily be broken okay um you know yeah it could easily be broken based upon hey it could be personality differences or anything okay um 
And and that's the Congo path, okay? That's the Congo path of comedic spirituality. And this is why, you know, and I'm, um, part of the reason why I'm sharing this is because someone had asked, you know, uh, they wanted to get clarity and they didn't understand when I said, well, because um, I've told someone, I've said, hey, your ancestors are the one, if you're, if you're approaching it from this perspective, your ancestors are the ones who basically, um, if they don't like something, if they're offended by something, then they're offended by it, okay? You can't offend God, but you can offend your ancestors because they're like you, okay? They have prejudices. They have likes and dislikes and, and things they prefer and things they don't prefer. And if you go ahead thinking, oh, okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and live this type of life, that's not, it's, it, it's not going to happen, okay? They are the, they're the gatekeepers. And this is how they approach things, okay? So this is the difference between, like I said, the Congo path, the Yoruba path of comedic spirituality and the Congo path of comedic spirituality. Um, like I said, it's a difference in how the, it's a difference in how that spiritual technology is applied. Um, hopefully that makes a little bit more sense to you. Um, like I said, you know, hopefully that makes sense to you. Uh, and it gives you a better idea in regards to how to deal with your ancestors and if you feel yourself being compelled to do one or the other know oh okay this is what's going on okay that way you're not feeling all shocked and all you know thinking you got to go in here you got to do it a certain way okay it's not something else you got to do it a certain way it's just that you know you have to go ahead you're, you're following your ancestors lead and if you don't want to fight it, you want it to go, want the process to go a little bit smoother, this is how you go in here and you embrace it, okay? So, like I said, hopefully that makes sense. Um, if you got any questions, comments, suggestions, like I said, uh, feel free to drop me a line. As I've stated before, um, if you're interested in reviewing the book or so, um, the new book that's coming out, um, Feel free to go ahead and look at the comment section. Leave some comments and we'll go ahead and we'll get back to you. Also, the course is coming out soon too. The course will be probably ready within four weeks as well. Okay? Until next time, fam. That's poo. Peace. Don't